Good evening, Nerd Fam, and welcome back to Dell Tech World. We are here on night one of three days of live coverage with theCUBE. I am super delighted to be here. It's my first Dell Tech World. My name is Savannah Peterson, joined by my co host and co founder of theCUBE, Dave Vellante. Dave, what a special event. I love the Cube after dark. It's like some of my hey, favorite stuff to do. Don't get me started on that. You know I have a lot of ideas for theCUBE right, after yep, dark. Great, bring you know, I mean, bring we got to start Savannah. involving some of the nibbles, some of the cocktails, some of the fun tech that people use at nighttime versus their connected systems during the daytime. We'll get there. Bring the ideas. We'll get there, Savannah. you know. Yeah. <laughs> hey, I, you know, you know who might be open to some of these ideas is our friends at Dell. On that, on that. I have no <laughs> ideas for Cube After Dark. <laughs> but I'm happy to talk to you guys day or night. Well, great anytime. to see you, JJ. <laughs> you too. <laughs> on that note, we have J.D. Davies, the Senior Vice President of Corporate Affairs at Dell. Thank you so much for being here with us tonight. Thank you. How exciting is it for you to be at the show? Oh, well, I mean, we look forward to this, is this event like every year, and, and we laugh internally that the day after the show, or maybe the Monday after the show ends, we're already planning for Dell Technologies World uh, the following year, and just think this AI train that we're now on started for us right here with Project Helix at Dell Tech World a year ago, and, and now so much has changed so rapidly. So what's that journey been like in the last year? Well, I mean, you know, it's all about helping our customers really understand how to get started, like, like Michael talked about in the keynote this morning, and the time to get started with AI and Gen AI is here and now, and it just creates endless possibilities in terms of technology advancing human progress, which is why we exist. I can't really think of any greater purpose on Earth than to help the world, um, you know, transform digitally, to deliver more opportunity to more people. And in, and in this new space, one of the things I'm excited that we're focused on talking about in our session tonight is end-to-end -end sustainability in this space. And when we're talking about, I, I love when we hear Michael and any of the other executives talk not, not just about AI for business, but how AI is actually going to change lives, save lives, enhance lives. And so what does end-to-end -end sustainability mean in terms of AI for Dell? How do you do that? That's a big task. Yeah, sure. So part of my job as part of corporate affairs is leading our ESG, or environmental social responsibility, or social governance strategy. And we recently have launched, if you will, or unveiled this idea of end-to-end -end sustainability. So conversations we were having with customers was, I really need a better sense for where sustainability is built into all that you're doing at Dell. So. Um, we formed our ESG function over three years ago. We evolved from thinking about it as social impact or corporate social responsibility to really a business imperative and how you drive uh, ESG across the entire enterprise to better serve customers because they're trying to meet their own sustainability and climate goals and they need our help. So within the um, sustainability, not just environmental sustainability, but business and societal sustainability overall, we think about how we're building sustainability into our products and solutions and services. So the front end, think about a latitude with a 50% recycled cobalt battery, almost 100% recycled plastic in our packaging, uh, the way that we use optimizer and cloud IQ so that you can track and report on mm -hmm. your emissions and use that as part of your regulatory reporting back to the government primarily in the EU. Um, also our services, so one of our ESG goals is for every metric ton of technology we sell, we take a metric ton back. So our recovery services are an offering we make available to our commercial customers around the world. Those are things that we are innovating every day and building into the offerings that our customers can buy. Then there's the back end, which is a lot of uh, customers ask us, how are you governing ESG? What are you doing to publish and disclose all of your ESG metrics. What is the back end through a data lake and automation to make ESG data more findable? And so now we've connected all of this in an end-to-end -end view of sustainability, not only for environmental sustainability, but also digital inclusion. So you heard Michael talk today about what we're doing uh, with AI to drive human progress, and we can't be a sustainable world or a sustainable business if we're not bringing all people into the digital economy and so we need to make sure that we are equitably and responsibly delivering AI and bringing the future innovators forward um, because we're going to need to depend on them to continue this 
really important work. So now we have this end-to-end -end view, a way to talk to our customers and stakeholders about what we're doing, including governments and regulators. And we also have a sustainability roadmap, we probably briefed you guys on it at theCUBE, in terms of what new innovation we're bringing forward this year, and then you'll see us continue, just like we do with all product roadmaps, uh, talk to our customers about this so they know if they want to buy based on what sustainability we're driving, they now are able to do that just like they can buy for memory or battery life right. on a laptop. So I really like the way you're describing this because we first started talking about this a few years ago. The vision really hasn't changed. Right. Uh, but there's a lot of, that has occurred since then. Yeah. Um, I was talking to a very large internet company the other day and they said they actually are going to need gigawatt data centers. So yeah. I was like trying to figure out what's the biggest data center in the world today. And I thought it was like around 125, 150 megawatts. Right. I think there's one out here. I think Switch is like 600 or something. There's, yeah, sure there's one big one out I'm here. I'm not sure yeah. it's fully operational <laughs> yet, but, but I guess my point is, I'm happy to see that the message and the vision is the same, but there's yeah. this new thing. I know. And you know, IT has never really been that big of a cul culprit. It's been kind of single digit, but now, the forecasts are like, oh, it's going to be 20% of the energy. Yeah. So everybody's concerned that we won't be able to see through the vision of, of AI because we won't be able to power it. Michael said today, we're, not only that, we're going to go to where the power is accessible and cheap. Yeah. So do you think we're actually going to be able to power this AI error and how are we going to get there? Well, I certainly do not have all the answers, but it is a big conversation that we're having internally sure. with our customers, partners, and governments. When we think about AI and where, where policymakers need to focus, it's got to be um, around innovation. Mm -hmm. How do you make sure that you're not over-regulating so that you can not stifle innovation? It also has to be, um, as we think about where we're investing, so you have to invest, and you're seeing a lot coming out of Congress and the Biden administration about where we should invest. There's mm -hmm. new AI acts out of Europe, so how do we need to invest in the AI infrastructure? But then you see government separately talking about how are you going to invest in the energy grid, and then separately you see an agenda around how are you going to reverse the negative impacts of climate. Well, guess what? We have to look at all three of those things together if we're going to power AI, not you know just cheaply, but also sustainably, and so what governments need to do is be more agile in the way they think about regulating and investing in these things and connect some dots, because I mean, that's what we do every day for our customers, connect dots and solve problems, and so I think connecting those things is a really big part of it, and then when we say, well, how are we going to power AI? Jeff's going to talk about this in his keynote tomorrow yeah. around. Um, the energy grid and how much energy we produce and then how much AI is going to require. And so we've got to make sure that we're accessing all forms of sustainable energy or lower carbon uh, energy like nuclear, nuclear or hydro. It's not just wind and solar. So all of that's going to have to come together to make sure that we can power this greatest revolution, it's, technological it's, revolution of our lifetime. It's kind of like scope three a little bit. You're not sure exactly how it's going to go. Yeah, it's going to well, I'm glad you brought yeah. that up yeah. because we're actually revisiting our climate agenda and Dell has a goal to be net zero by 2050 and the biggest portion of our um, climate work is around the use of our products in the field by our customers and like Michael talked about today, everything we sell plugs into a wall mm -hmm. and so now we've got to take a step back and say okay, we set these goals for ourselves before Gen AI was real, now we're taking a step back and looking at what we need to do to have an AI specific goal or to revisit um, the goal set that we put forward as we work toward key milestones to get there. I think, I, I, yeah, I mean it's so important. I was even, I was delighted by some of the robotics work you're doing to disassemble electronics to then yeah. recycle the parts. I mean you're really, you're touching a lot of levels. One of the things I thought was interesting was I was researching, talking to you, Dell has been putting out an ESG report since 1998. That is a long time. That's actually pretty impressive. It, it's, it's very in line, and, and we were, I had a conversation at WIDS, the Women in Data Science event, very recently, talking about the UN sustainability goals, and they were talking about inclusion as a part of that sure. ecosystem, and how important it is that people don't get 
left behind. I know one of the big goals of Dell is another billion lives impacted by digital inclusion with their next ESG efforts. How are you, I feel like this is such a unique and dynamic problem. How are you approaching digital inclusion when it comes to making AI accessible to groups that maybe don't even have regular, regular, us privileged folk technology at their disposal consistently? Well, I think it's two billion people in the world aren't accessing the internet today, and so I think that, you know, we still haven't solved this problem even before AI became right. real. And it's, so yeah. what we want to make sure of is that we're bringing AI into our digital inclusion efforts. So one of the things we did is through our social innovation team as part of ESG, we were one of the first groups to do a use case on the back of on-prem Dell infrastructure for digital assistance. So we are announcing, or we announced today, as part of our AI news that we now have a Dell validated design for the use case of digital assistant. And any company can develop a digital assistant to meet their business needs, whether that is um, for customer service, the city of Amarillo is doing it to make their city services more accessible to people. Well, we created Tomas as a suite of digital assistants, if you will, to teach kids soft skills as they go interview for jobs in the tech sector, and we're training them on technical support and other elements of being certified so they can go gain employment and in some cases quite literally lifting themselves out of poverty. Some of the kids that were here on stage with us today have never been on an airplane. So there's just, AI is a really important, we need to make sure that as we have more participation, equitable participation in the digital economy, well, what we mean by digital economy today is different than it was even a year ago. So we're working hard across our totally social yeah. innovation to ensure that the work we do is bringing all um, people into this opportunity. But there's some real basics still that we have to tackle as a society, and so we're trying to focus on that holistically. Basics, right, and it's super important because I heard a stat the other day, it might have even been an Elon stat, so you take it with a grain of salt, but sometimes <laughs> he makes some good predictions. He said something to the effect of within the next five years or 10 years, whatever date you want to pick, 99% of the intelligence in the world will be non-biological, in other words, machine intelligence. Machines, yeah. So, to your point, if two billion people don't have access to that intelligence, that's, right. that's not right. Well, you're going to create an even bigger divide. Yes. So right. So that's what we're talking about and, and working on is how do we make sure that even if it's leapfrogging what we're doing today to bring everyone into this AI era and how could they use a mobile phone, for example, to participate. So. so I'm curious. You've got a child graduating this week. Very exciting. Yes, I do. Would you like to give him a shout out? Who's graduating? Oh my gosh, yes. Hey, Michael Davis, congratulations <laughs> on an yeah, amazing right. high school career. He is my second. My oldest son, Jake, is at LSU and pre-med and doing awesome. And then I have an eighth grader going to high school. So life at my house is incredibly uh, chaotic. But what an amazing time for these kids to be coming into their own as young adults, and my job is to prepare them for what's ahead and try to create every opportunity in the world for them. I think that's my most important job. Exciting times for you. No, so I love this, so this is where I'm driving, and I did want to give them a shout out. Shout out to all of us from the Cube, to all the grads, congratulate <laughs> all y'all. It's a big deal, very exciting time to be alive. What is conversation at the dinner table like with you and your kids around AI and sustainability? Oh well, um, so, I have three sons, and you know my youngest, who's now 14, gave up single-use water bottles as a first grader for Lent, and we haven't used single-use plastics wow. in our household <laughs> in 10 years. So, wow. that wow. is a thing. That's um, amazing. In Love the that. early days, we had a, a video about what Dell was doing to advance sustainability, and, it, and I went and spoke to his first grade class. So this has been a conversation for a while. Now the conversation with the teenagers about AI is to make sure that they're not plagiarizing or using it to write right, their English the papers. Yeah. So the whole, I mean it is more about how can it be used in education and as a tool, not as a replacement for thinking and being creative. And, and so it's more about what to, not to do and setting those rules, just like we have to set ethical AI rules in our companies, families have to do the same thing. 
really great analogy. Oh my gosh, I love that. Wow, it's, it's, you're truly a holistic leader in this space, aren't you? We're just barely hanging on, I don't know. <laughs> it's just how it goes. I, I, I feel you. <laughs> hey, we're all doing the best we can in our That's human right. suits on this particular right. journey on this rock. Closing question for you. You mentioned so much has changed in the last year. What do you hope to be able to say when we have the pleasure of having you back on the show at the next Dell Tech World that you can't yet say today? Well, I mean, we didn't imagine we would be here when we were here, you know, a year ago with Project, Project Helix. Helix. I mean, I mean amazing. you know, it right. was a to concept the at the yeah. time. And so, you know, I think for Dell Technologies, the work that we do with our portfolio, so what we do, and the work we do with ESG, which is who we are coming together, the impact we can have for our customers and our planet has never been greater. So I've been at the company for 24 years. Um, so this you started year. when you were two? Yes, <laughs> yeah. exactly. So my 24 year anniversary is in December. Uh -huh. um, and it's just a new challenge every day. And so I can't imagine exactly what we'll be talking about, but I know it's going to be impactful. And I know the world needs what it is that we do every day. So I'm, I'm really proud of what we've accomplished and where we're headed, I'm pretty optimistic. Congratulations. Thank you. Great yeah, having you on again. Thank you for having yeah. me. Well, JJ Davis, what a treasure. I'm, I feel lucky to have gotten to spend so the time. nice to meet you and welcome so to the nice Cube. I hope to see you. you back here next year too. I, well, I, I suspect you'll be lucky enough if I charm Dave for long enough. We'll, we'll get to have this happen again next year. <laughs> all right. And that said, congratulations again to your grads and to all your kids and to everyone out there celebrating whatever it is you might be celebrating on this beautiful Monday evening here. We're live at Dell Tech World in fabulous Las Vegas, Nevada. My name's Savannah Peterson. You're watching theCUBE, the leading source for enterprise tech news.